In this video, we will go through how to perform a CHD test on a Duramin 100 hardness tester. The same procedure can be followed for the Duramin 40 and Duramin 650. The first thing you should do is to create a new job. You do this by clicking on the plus button. Name your project. If you know which objective you'll be using, you can choose it here. Otherwise, you can select it later. The next thing we want to do is to select the method, dwelling time and which magnification lens we're going to use. To select the method, click here in the upper left corner. In this case, we will select Vickers and set the load to 1 kg force. To select the dwelling time, click on Test Settings and choose Dwell Time. By standard, it should be between 10 and 15 seconds. We will set it to 10 in this case. Next, choose the magnification lens in the lower left corner. In this case, we have chosen the 40 times magnification lens. Once we're set, we can adjust the focus. We can either use the autofocus function or do it manually by scrolling the mouse until the image is clear. Press the blinking button saying in focus once you're satisfied. You should now see that the in focus button stopped blinking and that the Z value changed to zero, meaning that this is a focus reference. We also have the opportunity of moving around on the surface by clicking and dragging. We want to create an indentation pattern. First we need to see where the pattern should be positioned, so we click on this button called Overview to get the full view of the sample. In this case we want to create a test pattern that goes from the edge towards the core of the sample. Once we're ready to create our test pattern, we click on this button and choose Test Pattern. In these settings we have a lot of options. First, we want to make sure that we are creating a CHD pattern. Next, we'll choose case hardening depth and also choose a hardness limit. In this case, 550 is OK. If we want a termination value, we can choose one of these two options. In this case, we will choose terminate within three points after reaching limit. Hit OK. Next, we want to customize the pattern. We start by choosing which distance from the edge we want our pattern to start from. In this case, we will set it to 150 micron. Next, we set the distance between each point. In this case, we will set the value to 150 micron. We choose the line distance in case we want a zigzag pattern. We set it in this case to 0.5 mm. If we want a line pattern, we set this value to 0. The total depth will in this case be 2 mm and we want a zigzag with two rows of indents. When we hit OK, we can now see our pattern on the sample. If we click on the magnification icon here, we will see the full pattern with 13 indents in total. Now we want to change the orientation of the pattern. We want this green button to be exactly on the edge, so the first indent will be 0.15 mm from the edge. By holding down shift, we can move the pattern around on the sample. We can also zoom in on a particular area of the pattern by holding down Ctrl and Shift while dragging a loop around the area we want to zoom in on. We can also scroll the mouse to zoom in and out. To change the orientation, just click and drag on the scroll bar on the right side of the screen. Otherwise, you can type in the value in degrees in the right corner here. As mentioned before, we want the pattern to start exactly on the edge. In order to do that, we will first make sure the pattern is positioned in the right place. Then we will save the changes in the pattern settings, and then we click on this icon to change back to the objective camera. Now we want to move to the position of this point, which we will do by double-clicking it. We scroll to focus and then click and drag to look for the edge. Once we find it, we will click on the button that says start at position. We want to make sure that snap to edge mode is enabled and then we click on select edge. Now we click right on the edge where we want our pattern to start. We click OK to exit the pattern settings and now we are ready to begin the test. After the machine has done this 13 times, you will now see a chart in the lower side of the screen showing the results for each indent. 
To take a closer look at the results, go to the upper left corner and click on Results. If we click once on each result, we will see a snapshot of each indent. We can quickly check if the software correctly detected the corners of the indent. We do this by hovering over each corner. In case one of the corners is unprecise, we can click and reposition it manually. If we double-click on the results, we will go to the live view. By using the left and right arrows, we can now move to the position of each indent one by one. If we want to save all the parameters involved in this job, we go to Program, click Save and give it a name. In this case, we don't need to redesign the parameters if we want to run the same test again. We can create a report by clicking on Report and Print. By doing this, we will not actually send the report to a printer, but only generate a report with results and snapshots from the test. Click on Export and choose either PDF or Excel and click OK. If we want to archive the results inside the software, we click on Archive, give it a name and click OK. And we're done!